Linear Programming In this unit, we will discuss linear programming. We will explain the application and requirements to use this method. We will create the appropriate formulas for the model including the objective function and the constraints. To solve these equations, we will start with a graphical method and then use the corner point method. Finally, we will review methods to address changing parameters, including changing the objective function along with sensitivity analysis. Linear programming is a useful tool for managerial decision making. The goal is to balance trade-offs to obtain the best result. Success is based upon the quality of the model used to represent the situation. Examples where linear programming may be applied are typically looking to maximize or minimize a given business metric. Examples include transportation planning to minimize distance traveled and thus minimize cost and response time. Factory operations use the tool to define the mix of products that will maximize profit. For services, employee scheduling is often analyzed to enhance customer satisfaction while minimizing cost. The first step in setting up a linear programming solution is to understand the requirements that must be met for this tool to work. We seek to maximize or minimize the value of a metric, typically related to finances. Alternative options must be available within a given set of constraints. Ultimately, the situation must be modeled by linear equations or inequalities. For this example, we are trying to determine the product mix that will maximize profits. The company makes two products, so the example will be a good start. The first step is to gather data regarding the business. The two products go through the electronic and assembly departments for differing amounts of time. We see the unit profit for the products along with the capacity or available hours for the two departments. We set two variables X1 and X2 to be the volume of the XPods and Blackberries respectively. Taking the data from the business environment we create the appropriate equations. Based on the product unit profits, we find that the total profit is the unit profit multiplied by the volume for each product. Substituting the values, we have a total profit of 7 times x1 plus 5 times x2. The goal is to maximize the total profit. This is the objective function. There are also several constraints that must be considered. In this case, we cannot exceed the time available in the two departments. The two constraints for the two departments will be calculated here. From the initial data, we know how many hours each product spends in the two departments. For the electronic department, we get that 4 times x1 plus 3 times x2 must not exceed 240 hours. For the assembly department, the constraint is that 2 times x1 plus 1 times x2 must not exceed 100 available hours. The simplest approach for linear programming is the graphical solution. For this method, we plot the objective and constraint equations on a graph and identify the area of feasible solutions. We then add an ISO profit line based on the objective function. Finally, we move the ISO profit line outward to find the point of maximum profit. On this graph, we have plotted the two capacity constraints associated with the two departments. Two dashed lines are shown. Recall that we must meet both constraints. As a result, potential solutions to the problem can only exist within the blue shaded area of the graph. This is the feasible solution region. The values of x1 and x2 must fall within that area. Next we pick a possible value for the objective function. In this case we have chosen $120. This is just a starting point. Try other guesses for profit and see if the outcome changes. Going back to our original objective function, we get 210 equals 7 times x1 plus 5 times x2. We can solve for the x and y intercept of this equation. The values turn out to be x1 equals 30 and x2 equals 42. The intercept defines the point where the line being plotted crosses the axis. 
Here we see the $210 profit line plotted on the graph. Note that this line crosses the x-axis at point 30, 0, and the y-axis at point 0, 42. Now we plot a number of ISO profit lines using a variety of total profit numbers. We can see that the profit line for a total profit of $350 is in the right direction, but there is still more money to be made. On the other hand, the $420 profit line is beyond the feasible solution region, so this is not the answer. It appears that the solution falls between these two lines. Graphically, we see that the solution falls at the point where the two departmental constraint lines cross each other. This is the result that will maximize profit while staying within the constraints. The resulting profit is $410. Looking at the problem mathematically, we start with the capacity constraints for the two departments. We restate the equations here. Drawing upon your math knowledge, we are solving two equations with two unknowns. We replace the inequalities with equal signs and multiply the second equation by negative 2. Since we multiply both sides of the equal sign, the equation is still accurate. Adding the two equations together, we get that x2 equals 40. Substituting the value of x2 into the top equation, we find that x1 equals 30. Our solution is found at point 30, 40. Here we see the optimal solution plotted on the graph. To maximize profit, the company should build 30 X-Pods and 40 Blueberries. Another graphical approach is the Four Corner Points method. We start by identifying the four corners of the Feasible Solution region. These points are shown here marked as 1, 2, 3, and 4. This method states that the optimal solution will be found at one of the four corner points identified. We calculate the profit at each point and find that the value of x1 and x2 at point 3 generate the most profit. Thus this point, 30, 40, is the answer. Again, we see that our maximum profit is $410. In the business world, change is not uncommon. Resources change all the time. Often we may ask how much of a difference additional resources would make. We can test the result by changing the constraints in our analysis. The term shadow price refers to the added value of relaxing a constraint. For example, if I relax the resource constraint, add an employee, how much profit will be added? The shadow price is only valid for a particular range of changes. Sensitivity reports are used to define the range of changes. This graph shows the sensitivity analysis for the given example. In this case, we have added resources to the assembly constraint. With this change, we are able to increase profits to $415, as shown at corner point 3. This is the value of a sensitivity analysis. We can try different what-if analyses and see the result. This next sensitivity analysis shows the profit impact of reducing resources in the assembly department. The new profit level is $405. Another possible change would be to the objective function itself. The sensitivity analysis can show the impact of changes to the coefficients of the equation. Sensitivity analysis can be used to review any number of changes to gain a clear understanding of the business process under review. To this point, we were looking at maximization problems. We were trying to maximize profit, for example. We will now consider minimization problems. Here we are trying to minimize the value of the objective function. Think of minimizing cost, for example. We follow a similar process, except that we move the ISO cost line inward until it reaches the lowest cost corner point. In this example, variable x1 represents the amount of black and white chemicals produced, and x2 represents the amount of color chemicals produced. The objective function for total costs is shown. We see four constraints regarding the chemical amounts. Our goal is to minimize cost. Plotting the three constraints, 
Start by adding the three lines x1 equals 30, x2 equals 20, and x1 plus x2 equals 60. The arrows coming from the three lines represent the valid areas. For example, since x2 must be greater than or equal to 20, the arrow points upward. The overlap of the three constraints is the feasible region. We see that the feasible region is the upper right corner. Going back to the objective function for this example, we calculate the cost at the two corner points. There are only two corner points since there are only two corners. The calculations show that the lowest cost is at point A, x1 equals 0, x2 equals 20. Key points to remember. Linear programming is used to minimize or maximize a business outcome. Often it is used for employee scheduling or product mix analysis to minimize cost or maximize profit. To use linear programming, we start by creating an objective function that is an equation based upon the business situation. For example, might we might look at the capacity of a given operation defined by the number of items produced multiplied by the respective effort. We identify the constraints such as limits to available labor or machine time. We consider multiple alternative courses of action and then create the linear equations describing the various conditions and alternatives. To solve these equations, we will start with a graphical method. We convert the constraints into inequalities and plot the objective function and the constraints. The area of overlap for all equations is the area of feasible solutions. We add an ISO profit line based on the X and Y intercepts and find the maximum point within the area of feasible solutions. The coordinates of this point define our answer. Another approach is to use the corner point method. We identify the corners of the area of feasible solutions and plug the coordinates into the objective function. The point that gives us the maximum result is the answer. Finally, we considered the impact of changing resources. The shadow price reflects the impact of adding or removing resources. We also consider changing the objective function. We can complete a before and after analysis to understand the impact of the proposed changes. Although we have used a maximization approach, minimization, such as reducing costs, is performed in a similar fashion but uses reverse constraints and ISO profit lines.